now I know something that's very, very dear to your heart, and you were alluding to me right before we went on, but what you're doing with the soldiers down in Washington, what, what is that all? Well, this year, this will be my ninth year uh, hosting the National Memorial Day concert, and I've actually mm -hmm. been co-hosting it for the last six years with Gary Sinise. Um, and I got involved with this nine years ago by my dear friend Charles Durning. You know, oh, know the actor Charlie yeah, Durning. Of course. Now, Charlie, some people know, many don't, that Charlie was literally a, one of our American war heroes. He was, was he really? Oh, yeah. Charlie was, Charlie was a, a ranger in, in World War II and was in the initial assault at, at um, uh, Normandy. He was an army ranger. ranger. Army ranger. Wow. And it's funny because you see Charlie, a lot of people think yeah, of him as a heavy oh. set little guy. I've seen the pictures of him when he was in the service and he was like, he was this big and he would climb, you know, he could rappel up a wall. Uh. And Charlie was in that initial assault on Nor at Normandy and received the Silver Star, which is next to, you know, you're talking about just below Congressional Medal of Honor kinds yeah. of stuff. And, you know, I, I've worked with Charlie many times over the years and I'd see him sometimes even in the, in the makeup room and he takes his shirt off. He's got scars all up and down in here. And, when in, and then when talking to him and you find out, these were bayonet wounds mm. because he literally was in hand-to-hand -hand combat and, and was bayoneted by, you know, by Germ, you know, German, you know, soldiers. Not, German soldiers back then. And he, uh, he was hospitalized for well over a year and a half during the war. And it, you know, he just now he's starting to like open up about this kind of stuff. But he's been recognized. He 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 received a, uh, an award from the, from the French government for his work. You know, for his his, oh his service. Sure. So he's truly a war hero. But he got me involved nine years ago. He asked me. He says, Joe, we do this concert in Washington because now this will be the twenty first year of the concert. Right. So the, the concert had already been going for about ten years when he when he approached me. He says, I'd like you to, if you can come with me and do this concert in Washington. Right. I said, oh, Charlie, for you, you're a pal, sure. I'm thinking normally Memorial Day weekend, you know, we watch the Indianapolis 500, right. you have a barbecue. You get the hand cheeseburgers going. Exactly. Yeah. And uh, I had, I come from a somewhat of a military family. A lot of my relatives had been in the military, but thank God all of them had come back. I had right. five uncles that all fought in World War II. You know, they all came back. So while I, I, I was military oriented, there was no, the M Memorial Day didn't have necessarily a specific special meaning for me. Right. As for many people, right. they, they look at it, hey, three day weekend, great, you know, yeah. unless yeah, exactly. you've had people who are directly affected. Well, I go and do this concert the first year, and I was just, I, I couldn't believe it. We get a live audience of over 300,000 people come to this concert. And we do things like readings, and we have musical acts, like this year we'll have Lionel Richie. We have Brad Paisley coming this year. We've had all kinds of people, everybody from Tom Hanks to, you know, the, the group Chicago to, you know, uh, Lawrence Fishburne, mm. Dennis Leary. We bring in different actors, do oh, okay. readings. Anyway, we, it, it, what it does, this concert shows you what Memorial Day, why we have this holiday. In other words, it's, an, it's not a political event. It's put on by the United States government every year, and it's just... It, it, it allows people to take a moment of pause because they, they broadcast it also on PBS and the you know, Armed Forces Network around the world. To, to take a pause, it's okay to have your barbecues, okay to watch the, mm -hmm. the cars racing at Indianapolis. Right. But take a minute to just think about all those lives ever since 1776 right. who right. Right. basically right. sometimes made the ultimate sacrifice so that we can have holidays like this. Yeah. And so for me, it really put that all into focus from, from that first concert. And uh, I've been doing it ever since. And uh, Ozzie Davis, the great actor Ozzie mm -hmm. Davis, used to sure. host it. When he passed away, they asked if I would take over as the host, which was I was very flattered to do. But then I asked if I could bring in my dear friend Gary Sinise, who I know was very active with um, much of the, uh, mil the military, right. supporting them. Right. So right. he and I have now been co-hosting it for about f uh, five or six years now. That's fantastic. And uh, yeah. again, I don't that's see I don't see an end in sight to that for me. It's really I think it's the most important thing I do every year. Really, that's yeah. fantastic. Now, how do you? Uh, we were talking about, the, about this too. How do you when? You know, you're, you're talking about these war stories and you got 300,000 people in front of you, you got the symphony behind you, you got family members here. I'm just saying this, I'm getting goosebumps up and down my body right now. And 
how do you keep it together? It's, you know, it's very difficult, Joe. It's very difficult. But you know what, what, what keeps me going is knowing that I am just telling the story. I'm relating facts and I'm relating, I'm like, for an, you know, what you're inferring to is like my first time I did it, it was right after 9-11. Right. And I had to go up on the stage and I had the Washington Symphony Orchestra behind me. They were playing Mozart's Requiem. In front of me is 300,000 people. Here's the Capitol with the flag flying. Hey. Sitting in the first row are four men around my age. These are retired New York firemen. <coughs> in their full dress uniforms yeah, yeah, yeah. with their wives. All four of these firemen had lost their sons in 9-11 who, who were firemen. And the one gentleman had lost both his sons. One was a fireman and one was a policeman because the policeman's son knew his brother would be up there. So when he heard about it, he dashed over to the building and was also killed when the buildings collapsed. So this family only had two sons and they were both lost, a, fire, a fireman and a policeman. I mean, there was a movie that came out about it called, I think it was called Two Towers or Twin Towers, right. a documentary right. about, them, about them. It was an Italian family. Right. So now I'm reading their words because they had been interviewed, these four firemen, and, and, and now I'm reading their words to these 300,000 people, to these TV cameras, to the orchestras playing behind mm -hmm. me. And I'm saying things like, it's a good day when you can find a remnant of your son looking through the rubble. And as I'm doing this, I realize this is, this is beyond any acting job I've ever done in my life. This is right. something else. This is combining you know, reality to, to you know, what I do for a living, which is convey information right, to someone. Exactly. And it made me realize, I thought to myself, let me just get through this. But what helped me get through it is knowing, as I'm looking at the faces of these four men and their, and their wives, I'm, I, I have to tell their story. And, I, and that's my job. And for me to lose it, it's not gonna, it's not gonna help. It's not gonna, th their, their sons went through hell right. and, and they're gone forever. And so all, what all, out of respect for that, I have to do my best to convey this story. Yeah. So I got through it. And uh, it was very difficult, but it, ma it made me realize just how important this event was and how important Memorial Day is and how much we owe to not just the military, but to people like firemen and policemen and anybody who puts themselves in harm's way right. to make our lifestyle in this country Yeah, better. that we can do, yeah. So yeah. It, it was a difficult thing, but again, and for the same reason, playing this role on, on the show, playing a, an FBI agent, you know, people say, gee, your show's kind of gruesome. There's a lot, you yeah. know, our show deals a lot with, you know. Yeah, all uh, the bodies. And, bodies and blood. And stuff. But I say to myself, you know, when they say cut, I, it's a, I know it's a rubber arm. Right. Or right, I know right. it's fake blood. But there right. are guys, that men and women, who have to do that job every day. It's real. And it's the real deal. Yeah. And out of respect for them, my job is to do as good a job as I can to uh, portray them in the best light as possible to show what kind of heroes they really are, yeah, that yeah. they're doing work that, you know, not everybody wants to do, but thank God we have them doing it. That's such a fantastic way to look at it because, I, you know, it's just thinking like, you know, I'm, I'm seeing you do this in my head and just when your eyes would look at the father's eyes or something, I'm going, you're a pro because that is just so, God bless you that you well, can... As I God said, there you. were moments where I really thought to myself, yeah. I don't know if I'm going to, I feel like I'm going to levitate off the stage. Yeah. I mean, it was just, because yeah. first of all, as you know, you've, we've all done live sure. performances. Yeah. There's a power you derive from your audience. They, they exude a, a power when you're doing, a, if you're doing a stage performance. Mm -hmm. And you can, so you can only imagine the power of over 300,000 people. Mm -hmm. There's energy that, <clears throat> that's coming at you. And it, it almost crushes your chest. I mean, it's, mm -hmm. it's, it's just, I can't even describe it. And I try to describe it to people as I bring in different talent each year to do mm -hmm. this. I remember the first year I brought in Gary Sinise. Gary had traveled with his, his band, the Lieutenant Dan Band, around mm -hmm. the world. He goes to Iraq, Afghanistan, entertain the oh. troops. And I remember the first year I brought him in, I said, because the first year I asked him, I said, Gary, why don't you come and do the concert with your band? You know, the, he didn't host it with me that year. He mm -hmm. just did his band. I said, just come in and do, do your thing with your band and see how you like it. And then if it works out, maybe we'll do, continue to do the show together. And I said, so what's the biggest audience you've played to? And he says, well, we go, we go to Iraq and Afghanistan. We have something like 15,000 soldiers there at a concert. He says, it's pretty awesome. Yeah. I said, okay, <laughs> wait. Uh, and then I says, just you tell me how you feel after you perform with this thing. And of course, he's, they got up on the stage and it's with his band. A lot of them are very young, the, yeah. the band members. 
And when they stepped out on the stage and they looked out at this, you know, it's Woodstock, scene. here's yeah, this yeah. mass of humanity. And as I said, here's the Capitol. Ah. And that flag is flying and it's all lit up. And, and uh, uh, yeah. I, I could see it in their faces. They were like, they were like deer caught in the headlights. Yeah. Yeah. And after it was over, he said to me, he says, y you're right. There was no way you could describe yeah. what that feeling would be. I said, I know. And then from that point on, he says, Joe, I'll be here as long as you want me to be here. Oh my God. And, and, and everybody who's ever done it with me said the same thing. I mean, Lawrence Fishburne, Dennis Leary, anybody who's brought in, they've said, Joe, if you ever want me to come back, this really? is a, this, because it transcends, as I said, performing or <clears throat> anything we do as actors or musicians, or whatever we may be. Right. It's something else. It's a different level. It's something we're doing collectively as, as a nation. Right, you right. Know? right. And, and it's, just, it's, a, it's just a wonderful thing.